Hey guys, and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering lore. I'm Simon here for the Ether Hub, and today we'll be talking about the curious case of Sphinx on the plane of Amonkhet. You're probably wondering what could be so strange about a creature type we've seen all over the multiverse, right? Besides how Egyptian-y they look. Well, they actually have a deeper mystery to them. Their vow of silence. Back in the story of Amenket, before we reached the Hour of Devastation, the Sphinx of the Plain were, like on other worlds, regarded for their wisdom and knowledge. Being a primarily blue creature type and all that, you know they just love to read. But on this desert world, their vast encyclopedia of knowledge couldn't be accessed for they had taken a vow of silence, keeping their secrets to themselves until the god pharaoh aka Nicol Bolas's return. In total, there were only two Sphinx creatures in Amonkhet, those being Curator of Mysteries and Glyphkeeper. Both pretty strong cards in their own right, but surprising that this prominent creature type had just as many cards as, well, camels in this set. Anyway, out of the two, only Creator of Mysteries had any relevant flavor text, saying, To consult a Sphinx is a test of patience. Perhaps that's the point. Referencing their stubborn silence, keeping answers to long sought after questions. Glyphkeeper also tells us a little of this creature's importance to the plane, in particular to the initiates of the Viziers of Kefnet the Mindful, who have Sphinxes embalmed upon their deaths. The theory being that they can continue their silent search for knowledge in undeath. In the story, Nyssa and Chandra come across a Sphinx and try to strike up a conversation, knowing full well the creature's fondness for knowledge. They sought to get some information about the hostile world they were visiting. When met with silence, the Vizier of Poisons, Hapetra, told the outsiders of their vow. And that was the last we ever heard of it. There was no digging, no discussion, no why or follow up to why these creatures remained silent and what they'd have to say when the God Pharaoh actually returned. Honestly, some of the Sphinx themselves may have forgotten it over the years. But with the Hour of Devastation now upon us, their vow is broken and knowledge can once again flow freely. And what they have to say is frightening. Ominous Sphinx has the flavor text, the Sphinxes began to speak only after the second sun aligned. They whispered dire warnings, though none listened. Apparently this entire time, the Sphinx of Amenket knew of the God Pharaoh's betrayal, the truth of Nicol Bolas, but kept this dire warning to themselves until the threat had actually returned? Which begs the question, why? This is where I'm gonna need some help from you guys out there. Through all my research and without access to the actual Amenket art book yet, I'm at a loss. Why would the Sphinx take a vow of silence that stopped the truth which could have protected not only the people, but also the gods. With no relevant information available, I'm gonna throw out some speculations. First of which being Bolas, because of course, why not? He's a powerful ancient elder dragon planeswalker who managed to mind wipe and control gods. I'm pretty sure he's capable of silencing a few Sphinx. Maybe their vow was actually a curse, keeping the truth silent until it was just too late. You'd think they'd find another way of communication, but oh well. First theory is a bolus curse. Second is protection. Not protecting the truth, but the people of Amenket themselves. From what though? Well, actually themselves. The truth about the god pharaoh could have turned the people against the manipulated gods, who would follow Bolas's path no matter what. By keeping silent, the sphinxes could have spared thousands of lives, but still, they could have in some way convinced Kefnet the mindful of the truth, maybe. And lastly, the Sphinxes may follow the influence of Kefnet the mindful, who is most obviously connected to this creature type. Perhaps while Kefnet's knowledge is locked behind a veil, the Sphinxes are unable to communicate at all. Only when, spoilers, Kefnet isn't as alive as they'd like him to be, does this veil seem to break and they're free to scream late warnings all day. I don't know, just some of my thoughts and ideas, but like I said, I'd love some more info on this. But why does this matter at all? And why do I hope it gets addressed somewhere in the official lore, or at least in the art book? Well, it's because of this guy, Anesh Cryo Sphinx Sovereign, a legendary Sphinx that supports a Sphinx tribal synergy. Maybe not specifically designed for Amonkhet standard, but still interesting nonetheless. We don't know anything about Unesh, 
but through its synergistic card and the artwork, it looks as if it's leading a Sphinx Rebellion or Charge, presumably against Bolas and his Eternal Army, probably avenging the death of Kefnet. Oops, spoilers again. This is one legendary I hope Wizards of the Coast doesn't skimp out on. Please, please give me some more info on this thing, even if it's just in passing. I think Unesh holds the key to understanding this creature type on Amon Ket and why they went dark for about 60 years. But anyway, there you go guys, a quick overview of Sphinx on the plane of Amon Ket, a strange case for a creature type steep in knowledge but stuck in silence. Like I said, I really hope we learn more about them and how this vow began, and why it came to an end. Why does the return of Bolas prompt their warnings? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave it a like and share it with your friends, and of course subscribe for more awesome MTG content. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time here at the Ether Hub.